Hello, welcome to my tech fan. Longer CD sent me a laser engraver for the review, and this is B130 watt. The optical power is between 33 and 36 watts, and it has a highly concentrated laser for the stronger cutting. The working area is a little bit bigger than those typical desktop engravers. It is 450 by 440 millimeters, and the maximum speed is 36,000 millimeters per minute. The error assist can be automatically turned on and off by the software. This is very useful because in one operation we want to do the engraving without error assist and then uh, the cutting with error assist and later in the video I will show you why. It has uh, XY limit switches which are basically now the standards on these desktop engravers and data transfer over USB cable, Wi-Fi app and TF card but I saw in the pictures that there is no screen so I'm not sure how this offline engraving works without the laptop and also it has several safety protections like flame or tear detector, emergency stop button and a few <laughs> words about the safety don't forget that these are tools and not toys which require some safety equipment the most important are safety glasses for everybody in that room and uh, use it in a good ventilated room or if you use it regularly with some kind of enclosure and uh, exhaust those fumes outside of that room and never leave the engraver without the attention. Now let's see what's in the box. This was content of the package so we have this frame this is the X Gentry and this is a B130 watt uh, laser module. This is the plug for the air assist and I really like this solution this sensor for the focusing. The power adapter has the output of 24 volts and 7.8 amperes. This is the air assist pump. I already have experience with it and I know it is quiet and works good. Uh, only I don't like that um, the pipe which is provided with it has an inner diameter of 4 mm. Usually I saw a bigger diameter pipes with uh, this pump. And we have some USB cable, safety glasses and some uh, sample materials and maybe some tools inside. For the linear motion it uses rubber wheels, this is the X Gentry and the stepper motor for the X Gentry and at least it is good that it is not a moving module so it is fixed on the side of this Gentry and on Y axis it will also move on these uh, rubber wheels and this is the back of that frame and I can see a very long shaft and uh, there is a pulley for the timing belt I believe somewhere here is the stepper motor for it uh -huh, there is the stepper motor for the Y axis so it is fixed, not moving together with the X Gentry. And installation steps uh, fit on this uh, side of the paper. First step of assembling is installing the X Gentry to the side of the frames and tightening the V slot wheels. And then I can put together the frame and it will be holded by two bolts in each corner. Usually the assembling of the frame is smooth and easy, but uh, here not really. They try to create some kind of very close uh, structure here. And even I stuck here on the first step because uh, I cannot place this all extrusion here because that pulley is in the way. I moved the pulley to the left side and then I had enough space so I could uh, finish the assembling. And now step 3, installing the tummy belts. Now on one side the timing belt will go around this pulley which is actually a pair of the flange bearings and uh, I suggested so many times they try to avoid this kind of solutions. This was one of the reasons why the timing belt on one of my printers start to wearing too fast. It is much better selection if you use some kind of uh, normal pulley in one piece or if the teeth are inside in that case use the, a geared pulley. The lifespan of the timing belt will be much longer. <laughs> On the other side I have to do some fishing. And finally after approximately 5 minutes uh, it is around the pulley and now I have to do it on the other side too. This step is important to have perfectly squared frames with the X Gentry and then I can insert the end of the timing belt. Now tightening of the belt. Now installing the laser module and it need to be holded with this small M3 bolt. Not too comfortable for the use because don't forget we have to use this all the time when we want to set the focus. But it holds the position. Step 5 installing the limit switches and they are marked Y and X. This spacer on the X limit switch looks broken to me but I think it will work. And don't over type this, this is plastic and very small bolt. And the Y axis limit switch. 
And now installing this silicone tube and uh, it is good that it is from silicone because it breaks only under a very big angle but I think it could have a little bit bigger diameter and I'm not sure why is it necessary this additional wave it just puts some uh, more friction for the air but we will see how it performs when I start with the cutting of the wood. It should be long enough even in this position. Aligning the groove Connecting the air pipe. According to this, I'm almost finished, but definitely this instruction should be a little bit better and more detailed. For example, our beginner users don't know how to tie the V-slot wheels uh, similar. It is almost ready to turn it on, but um, I'm not sure if they heard about the ergonomics or something like that. So much nicer picture we would have if these uh, cables would be from the side. If they are already here, maybe they should provide some cables with uh, those 90 degree angle on the end. It's time to start with the cutting and engraving and uh, these are the materials that we use, different types and thickness of the wood, stainless steel, anodized aluminum, acrylic glass and similar. From software I will use both the laser GA bill and the light burn. Laser GA bill is completely free software but available only for Windows and we can do only one operation at a time. The light burn is more uh, complex software, not completely free but available for Macintosh and for Linux too. And uh, we can combine different cuttings and engravings in one operation. Now let's see how loud this is engraver. Oh, it is <laughs> very loud. And by default it is always rotating, I can see that. I will place the microphone on the same distance from my head and the module. And now you can imagine how loud is this. 68 decibels approximately, and that's very loud if you will be next to it for the longer time. And this is very big disadvantage of this very powerful laser modules. Uh, they are very loud because they need a lot of cooling. I didn't test not even one 30 watt or even 20 watt diode laser, which is uh, quiet. I am very curious who will be the first company who will come out with some water cooling solution or something similar. I started the live one software and it is doing the homing now and I think I will narrate the rest of the video because uh, this noise will be too loud for the background. The testing I am starting with is similar with thick plywood and I am setting the focus here and it is very comfortable to use this distancer on the back side of the module and now the focus is set to the top of this surface. Here you can see my settings in Liburn and uh, in every case I'm turning off the air assist for the engraving. The framing is a little bit um, uncomfortable because it is hard to see that laser spot and this is the engraving and this is speed up two times. The first line is with 100% power and this second line is with 60% power <laughs> and one of the objects uh, even fell out. So these are the speeds for 1000 to 6000 uh, millimeters per minute and the uh, different power and on the 1000 millimeters per minute 100% power I reached the cutting speed. Here you can see the engraving of the MyTech Fun logo. And it looks great, very sharp, 5000 millimeters per minute and 60% power. Then I need some experimenting for the grayscale image engraving different speed, power and the lines per millimeter and this is the setting I will use. This is a time rest of approximately 4 or 5 minutes. This is Padme from the Star Wars. And I can see it's a little bit light, it could be a little bit darker, so maybe not 50%, maybe 60 or 70% power on this uh, 16 thousand millimeters per minute speed. Then uh, the cutting. I will always use the air assist and the constant power mode. This is speed up four times. And only one object didn't fall out. So it can do the cutting even on 1200 millimeters per minute speed full power. But I can see a lot of burned edges. But the air assist should be on. This is the other side. Then I check the air assist, so the pipe is ok, it's not broken, the valve is opened. Here you can see the test uh, with the glass, now this is the with air assist enabled. I, I can hardly see the difference, see? When I remove the pipe and test with the water, I can see it works, it is not too strong, so maybe the problem is in the nozzle, air assist nozzle on the module. 
So here you can see the test. <laughs> for the first I enable the air assist, the second test I disable it and uh, you can see the problem. If the air assist is not strong enough it just case uh, more problems because the air helps the flames and this is the other side. I have this pump from uh, other laser engraver. It is very similar but it works on AC power and here you can see that uh, it uses a bigger diameter pipe and here you can see them side by side and uh, yes it, we can see that the, the second uh, pump is stronger but uh, the difference is maybe 30% or something like that. Again here you can see only the fan and then the air assist and it is hardly noticeable the difference. And this is with that uh, second pipe we can see that uh, it has an effect on the water. Next is cutting of this 5mm plywood. This is speed up 4 times. And two objects didn't fall out. So it can do the cuttings on 5mm plywood even on a 600mm per minute speed full power. But unfortunately I cannot see really the effect of the air assist. This is MDF wood, very hard for the cutting and usually these 30 watt diode lasers can cut on 400 millimeters per minute so I will test uh, around this speed. This is the first cutting and then on the second cutting the flame detector stopped the engraving, uh, the cutting. And a second attempt the same thing, so unfortunately with the weaker air assist uh, the flame sensor will be triggered. Black acrylic. And here I will do the cutting. Usually the settings are very similar to the MDF. So I will just do two cuttings to see if I can go above 400 mm per minute speed. This falls out. So basically the second is still in, but very near to be cut in one direction and here you can see on 400 millimeters per minute it was cut on 600 millimeters per minute in one direction it was cut but the other not really and then uh, engraving anodized aluminum i really like to work with aluminum because uh, we don't have the flames and very easy to have uh, settings because it can vary it from different strength this is only the last uh, point in real time speed. So this line was engraved now and you can see from 2000 to 10,000 millimeters per minute basically almost I could use uh, any of these settings. And then engraving stainless steel. These are engraved with 30 watt diode laser and usually I am using 200 millimeters per minute speed for 20 or 30 watt diode lasers. These are only last few seconds of the engraving. Ah, that is so refreshing. Well, it's there. Let's clean it first with isopropyl alcohol. <laughs> Even during the cleaning, I could feel how engraved is this surface. Let me illustrate you again with the noise. And for the filling, definitely the deepest from these uh, SS3 watt diode lasers, but they are all engraved on 200 millimeters per minute full power. And the conclusions. Well, during the video I mentioned a lot of things, what I like and what I didn't like with this laser engraver. So here I will mention only most important things. And I think this is the laser module. So I tested several 30 watt diode lasers on this channel and I'm always using the same materials. So I have some kind of card as a documentation from my previous testing. And definitely no question about it. This is uh, the strongest laser module I tested on this channel so far. The laser engraver have a lot of different uh, good solutions too. For example, I really like this uh, distancer on the back side, which is over here and ready to be used. But I don't like this uh, small bolt for adjusting the height of the laser module. So definitely here they should use some little bit better solution. I can see still use the rubber wheels for the linear motion. Not my favorite. I can see slowly that a newer generation of the laser engravers slowly are moving to the better solutions using a linear rods or rails or something similar. It works, uh, but uh, definitely I think it would be nice if they should move so to some uh, other solutions too. Now I think the biggest downside of this laser engraver is the air assist pump. Uh, somehow it doesn't work as it should be. I compared this pump with very similar one and okay, it is noticeable weaker, but not so much weaker as the results of the cutting. 
Uh, there may be several reasons for this. Uh, definitely one of them is also that uh, I think they use a little bit uh, too small air pipe. So bigger air pipe. And uh, one thing I couldn't check really, uh, that's the air assist nozzle. Because uh, to get that bigger speed when, of the air when it goes out from the nozzle, somehow it should uh, reduce the, the diameter of the cross section. I'm not sure is it done here or not, but definitely I can see that somehow it doesn't work. So it is hard to believe that uh, Longer didn't put this together in their laboratories, do some engraving with and without air assist, and definitely they should immediately see the difference, see that something is wrong here. Actually, this part I'm recording much later because I did some research, and good news is that each air pump actually works, and uh, I tested it with this laser module, which can be attached to the CD printer. Now, of course, uh, the airflow is reduced because of the throttling of the airflow on several points. First of all, these fittings here reduce additionally the inner diameter of the pipe. The next one is this valve. It definitely is not necessary because we have additionally two fittings which reduce the airflow. And then the biggest problem is here around these fittings and uh, this air nozzle here. Here I can see the hole is reduced to two millimeters only, definitely too small for this weak pump. And actually on this side here, we need a smaller, uh, smaller cross section, so smaller diameter, because uh, with this uh, we can increase the speed of the air, which is necessary for that clean cutting. And it is so easy to test it, so cutting with air assist should look like this. The difference is so obvious. Most of these things I can DIY myself. I can even change this pipe to the bigger diameter. Only one thing, it is not easy to solve to get a smaller hole here on the exit of the air assist nozzle. Well, actually a mechanical problem cannot really stop me, so I decided to try to repair this. I'm removing this small set screw, then I can remove this air assist nozzle. And then from cylindrical M5 bolt, I turn on late machine this part. Most important are the diameters. The inner is 3 mm and the outer is uh, 5 mm in minus tolerance. Part of the head is that bigger diameter. Here you can see my dimensions here. Maybe uh, this one is a little bit uh, short. It has to be press fit inside. If it is too small then you can use some captain tape inside. And uh, actually it can even stick out a little bit. In that case it will be closer to the cotton object and uh, we will have better airflow. Assembling back together. And also I'm removing this uh, valve. And now I'll do three cuttings. First one without air and then uh, with this stock pump. Only I remove this valve to get better flow rate. And then I will try this uh, fish tank uh, pump because uh, it has the same pressure but double flow rate. This is the cutting of the last hole with the fish tank pump. Now I can see the differences. So this one was without air with the stock pump and this is with the fish tank pump. As you can see, even with the stock pump, we can get much better results compared to this one. Most important modifications, I removed that valve and also I reused the hole on the assist nozzle from 5 to 3 millimeters. Maybe we can go even lower, but this is something what uh, longer CD should uh, experiment. I don't want to do all the homework instead of them. I informed the longer CD about the problem and they are working on the solution now. The real question is how they solve the problem with the existing units. Maybe they can just send out a new nozzles or, or just that uh, diameter reductor, but I don't know. Anyway, it's not my homework. I have C daughters and their homework is enough to me. I hope I could give you some useful information. If you have some additional suggestions, you know, a few lines in the comment section. Thank you for watching and happy and safe engraving. See you.